Here's a quick demonstration on using the Web Soil Survey. We're going to go to the uh, soil.usda.gov homepage, and from there we're going to go to Quick Access, and we're going to go down to Web Soil Survey. From there we are on the Web Soil Survey homepage. There is a Start Web Soil Survey button. There are three basic steps to define an area of interest, to produce and view a soil map and soil reports and interpretations, and then to produce reports or check out the data. So let's go in and hit this Start Web Soil Survey button. And what we have on our left is we have the ways to quick navigate into the area. On the right we have a map of the United States. I can pick a state and a county. When I pick Pennsylvania, it'll bring up a list of counties in Pennsylvania. I can go in into by address. I can go in by latitude and longitude. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quick go in by address and open up that uh, sub screen and I'll just type in uh, the address of Hershey, Pennsylvania. And then when I view that area, what it's going to do is it's going to zoom in to Hershey, Pennsylvania. And you can see it's done that. There's the town of Hershey. Um, on the top right, uh, we have some navigate buttons where we can zoom in, in, we can zoom out, we can pan, we can go back to the continental U.S. full extent. We can go back one button in the history where there's an identify button where we can identify any of the layers or data on the map. There's a measure button. There's uh, what data is available for that area. And then there's two important area of interest buttons. I would have to define an area of interest before the soil map and soil data explorers tabs will light up. I can do that either by drawing a rectangle or I can draw a polygon. I'm going to take a polygon and I'm just going to click on some corners. And as I do that, uh, my area of interest will be defined. And once it's done defining or drawing out that area of interest, you can see it's hashed that area in blue and the soil map tab has uh, lit up and become active. It tells me how many acres are in my area of interest. I can go in and put a title to that area of interest. So let's now produce a soils map by clicking the soil map tab. One of the things it does, you can see, it pulls out a legend of the soil types within that area. It gives me the acres and the percent that those soil types uh, make up within that area. And you can see now I have my soil map drawn out for that area. Let's just quickly go into a map unit description and see what the Duffield silt loam soil looks like. So what that's done is that's brought up a, a short map unit description. It's told me my elevation, my setting, and given me a summary of some of those properties of that soil. I can go up and, and print that version if I want to. So let's take close that. And next we're going to explore some soil data. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to open up the Soil Data Explorer tab. And what that has is an introduction, a brief description of some of the soil properties. It has suitabilities and limitations, soil properties and qualities, and then soil reports. Each one of those suitabilities and limitations it has major headings, and then I could open that up and get some of the minor headings. Then the land classifications, you can see there's a hydrox gradient by map unit. I'm going to go ahead and produce that map. It opens up a submenu, and all I really need to do is view that rating. And in a second or two, it will draw the map and give you the hydric soils rating and give you a legend of each mapping unit and what the rating is. At this point, I want, might want a printable report. There's two options I have. Is One of them is do a printable version of this report right now, or the second one is to add to a shopping cart. If I add it to the shopping cart, it'll add multiple reports every time I hit that button for a different report and save them into one large document. Let's choose the printable version. And it gives me the option to add a title to uh, change my map scale and to decide what, uh, uh, how many sheets of paper I want the map printed on. Let's just uh, put a view that report. And what that does is it opens up a, a new uh, window in a PDF and it produces a report. You can see I have my soil map with my partially hydric soil areas and my not hydric soils areas. I have the map legend and I have the, uh, the, the ratings for each one of those soils within that area of interest. I can choose either to print that report or uh, save that report on my 
local computer. So to see the various suitability and limitations that are available, we would just click on open up one of the headings and you can see under building site development there is corrosion potential for steel and concrete, there's suitability for dwellings with and without basements, and so forth and so on, and I can close those back up when I'm uh, done. Let's take a quick look now at the soil properties and qualities. Soil properties and qualities are generally uh, variable within each different layer of a soil so let's just take a look and we'll open up the soil physical properties and in that you can see various properties that I might be interested in available water capacity bulk density organic matter content and let's just take a quick look at saturated hydraulic conductivity and when you see that uh, one of the things you'll see is when I open that up it's actually going to give me some different options down here and one of those is the layer depth because the hydraulic conductivity is a property that may vary or probably varies with a layer. Let's put in inches and let's just put in 40 to 60 inch depth and then I'm going to view the rating. So that produces the same type of map and the same type of uh, legend or data and it's showing me this time the hydraulic conductivity of soils in micrometers per second. If I'm interested I can go on and click on the legend and that'll bring up the what I've shown on the map and also my soil ratings. You can see the slower hydraulic conductivity in those layers are marked in red and the faster ones are shown in blue. Let's close the map legend. Again we can do a printable version which will do this report or we can add this report to our shopping cart. When I add that to the shopping cart, it gives me an option to put in a title for that. We can just put in um, Joe's Farm, and then we're going to click OK, and that uh, automatically adds that to my shopping cart. Some of the other soil properties and uh, qualities that are available or we can go into look at the surface texture, or we can look at the water quality or the water content, we can get some of the engineering properties, for instance, the, the, the Ashdo class. We can get depth to restrictive layers. We can get the parent material, the hydrologic group. So let's just produce one more map for the soil hydrologic group. It's, you can see it doesn't give me the same uh, things because hydrologic groups to the whole profile are not really different by any layers. So let's just pick on view rating. It gives me a description of what the hydrologic group is. It shows me again that list of hydrologic groups for my each soil type in my area of interest and it produces a map of soil hydrologic groups. So that's about it for the web soil survey. A quick demonstration. Once we are done, if we've added things to our shopping cart, we can go in and hit the shopping cart uh, tab and what that'll do is that'll uh, produce a report. Uh, we're going to give it a title. We can check on and off some of the things we've added. And you can see I've added the soil physical properties, hydraulic, uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity for Joe's farm. Include or not include any of those things within that report. And then when I'm done, all I'm doing is going and hit the checkout button. And it can give me two options. I can get it now or I can download it later. And we can see now the report is generated. We'll take a quick look at some of the contents. It actually produces just about a whole soil survey report for that area. It has a table of contents, an introduction, a soil map of the area, the legend, and the map units uh, reports that I've asked for. It has descriptions of each one of the soil types within that area of interest. And it has any of the reports that I've uh, printed specifically for that area. So that's about it for the web soil survey. There is a lot of other things you can do. Uh, we hope you'll find that of interest and useful to get a soil map for any place in the country that you're interested in. If you have any questions, you can contact your NRCS soil scientist within your state or county. Thank you.